No matter how righteous Noah may have been, his virtue is circumscribed by his inability to respond to the wickedness of his day. As the floodwaters rose, not only did he enter the ark as his generation perished, but he proved unwilling, despite his privileged relationship with God, to leverage his stature towards changing either the behavior of his contemporaries or the decree of God. Et ha Elohim hit halech Noach. Noach walked with God. He was in the room or the ark where it happened. He could have used his clout to make a difference, but he didn't. All of which is why it's not Noah, but Abraham, whom we meet at the tail end of this week's Torah reading, who is our moral exemplar as Jews. Not only, as the Midrash explains, was Abraham willing to stand on one side of the world as the rest of the world stood on the other, but Abraham was willing to stand in the breach and put himself at great risk for the good of others. Abraham understood that given his privileged relationship to God, it was incumbent upon him to use that privilege to speak truth to power, even if taking a stand came at his own expense. The Talmud teaches, anyone who's able to protest against the transgressions of their household and does not protest is held accountable for the actions of the members of their household. Anyone who's able to protest against the transgressions of the entire world and does not is held accountable for the transgressions of the entire world. From Abraham to Moses in the house of Pharaoh to Queen Esther in the royal court to our own day, the Jewish measure of moral leadership is a willingness of individuals to leverage their position towards redressing the ills of society. May we all live up to the virtue of our predecessors. See you in shul.